Unlike what the majority of Americans want to believe, the real reason why most people will never become rich has nothing to do with your job, it has nothing to do with your degree, it has nothing to do with your boss, it has nothing to do with your president, and it has nothing to do with your skin color. The number one reason why most Americans will never become rich is because most Americans are too busy trying to look rich. It's ironic, but looking rich is the fastest way to stay poor. Now don't get me wrong, if you got the money, go out and buy whatever you want. But statistically, the majority of Americans would rather look rich than be rich. I'll show you. There are approximately 196 million Americans over the age of 21, and I'm gonna use this lopsided pie chart that I created to depict the financial situation of this 196 million Americans. Now, according to the Federal Reserve Bank, 28% of these Americans have zero investments or retirement savings put aside at all. So just over a quarter of working America has zero dollars put aside in any 401k, any IRA, any stock brokerage account, any real estate investments, any savings accounts. Just over a quarter of America has no money put aside in savings and investments from the Federal Reserve Bank. And then you have about 53% of Americans who have less than $10,000 saved up or invested somewhere. That means more than one out of two Americans, more than half of America has less than $10,000 put together in their savings accounts, in their check-ins accounts, in their 401k, in their IRA, in their self-directed stock brokerage accounts, in any real estate accounts, in their cryptocurrency accounts, and any other investments combined. Less than $10,000. Now there's a lot of people that we can blame. We can blame the government. We can blame the Federal Reserve Bank. We can blame inflation. We can blame your boss. We can blame your pay raise. We can blame the rest of the world. But none of these blames are going to actually fix your financial situation. And at some point, we have to take responsibility for our own finances because as soon as you take responsibility for your own finances, then you can change where you are in this pie chart in your wealth when it comes to how wealthy you are. And let's take a look at spending habits of Americans as well, because what you'll see is that 50% of Americans are putting their money into the lottery every single year, and that does not include putting money into things like the casino or gambling. That means at the very least, we have some overlap between people who don't have much wealth at all, who are spending money on things like lottery and gambling. We also have more than 100 million Americans that have a car loan. That means these are more than 100 million people, some overlap of people here who don't have money, who are going out and financing a vehicle. Not to mention the fact that the average new car payment in America at the time we're recording this video is $725 and the average used car payment in America is now $528. Now you might say, but just breathe. If I'm broke, how am I supposed to afford a car? Well, this is where it's very important for you to understand that if you're broke, you should not be going out and trying to finance a car. You should be going out and trying to buy a car with cash that we don't have to worry about the payments because now when you're going out and financing a new car, what ends up happening 99.99% .99 of the time is you're gonna go out and buy a much bigger car that you wouldn't be buying if you had to buy a car with cash. And if you have to buy a car with cash, well now you're gonna buy a less nice car but now you don't gotta worry about the payments and those payments can be used to build your wealth. And if you're thinking, Ugh, just breathe, lottery isn't really that much money. It's not gonna make or break someone's actual wealth and that could actually make somebody really rich and somebody needs a car to actually get paid so you can't really look at those things. Let's take a look at the spending habits of Americans, especially since the pandemic. Now, if you remember when the pandemic happened, a lot of free money was being distributed. And when that happened, we actually saw some of the fastest debt pay down that we have ever seen in history with credit card balances plummeting. But then things started to change. Just read the subheader. Louis Vuitton, Dior, Fendi, Lowe, and Celine all delivered record sales and record profits in the first half of 2021. The free money starts to go out and luxury brands start to make record sales. And I should also mention that this is coming out of one of the worst recessions that we have supposedly seen since the Great Depression. And then, unfortunately, we started to see credit card debt rise again at some of the fastest rates that we have ever seen, which brings us to today with the highest amounts of credit card debt ever in American history. And remember, not that long ago, American credit card debt was falling at some of the fastest rates we had ever seen. Today, we have the highest credit card balances ever. What changed? Well, when people get money, people generally want to spend that money. 
Now, of course, I know a lot of this is generalizations, but you have to understand that we live in a consumerism culture. Businesses are in the business of trying to get you to spend money. Credit card companies are in the business of trying to get you to spend money you don't have. Banks are in the business of trying to get you to spend money through money you don't have. And so now when you have banks, credit card companies, and corporations trying to get you to spend your money, what ends up happening is you have a lot of Americans that stay broke for the sake of all the rest of America. And this is where it is your job to get financially educated and not just understand the way the system works, but break out of the system and start building your own wealth. That means taking some of this money that you start to generate from your job, stop spending that money, stop giving that to your banker, stop giving that to your credit card company, stop giving that to all these other businesses and keep some of that money for yourself. That way you can save some of this money and invest some of this money. That way you can build some real wealth for yourself. And this is why financial education is so important because unfortunately, most of us never learn a thing about this in school. We go to school to get good grades, to get a degree, to get a job that we can get paid, but nowhere along the way do you learn what do you do with the money that you actually generate? How do you spend your money? And most of us only learn from our parents. And most of our parents don't have any financial education either because if they had that financial education, chances are they'd be teaching us. And that's why rich parents are always teaching their kids about how to invest your money, how to save your money, how to spend your money smartly, while everybody else has to figure it out by themselves. And most everybody else doesn't have resources to actually learn how to do that. Sorry, I got a little off track there. You can see the stuff really gets me riled up. But if you do want more step-by-step -step guidance on what you can do to start building your wealth and invest your money, I do want to let you know that my team at Briefs Media put together this amazing ebook on how to build wealth as an investor. You can read this ebook for free, and this walks you through from the beginning the basics of how do you build the mindset of an investor, to how do you save your first couple thousand dollars, to how do you start investing your money, how do you invest for cash flow, what are other ways that you can invest your money, how do you spend your money smartly, how do you earn more money, and how do you protect your assets. This ebook is completely free. This there's a ton of value in this ebook. If you want to get a copy of this ebook for yourself, all you got to do is click the link down in the description below or go to briefs.co slash ebook. The difference between a wealthy person going out and buying a G-Wagon or a Rolex versus what I like to call a fake rich person going out and buying a G-Wagon and a Rolex is now when a wealthy person goes out and they buy these nice and expensive things, what they do is they take the money that they're generating. It might be from a job that they're working. It might be from the business that they're running, but they take some of this money and they go out and they buy these assets. Assets. What are these assets? Things like stocks, things like real estate, things like businesses. They buy these assets, which then generate them more money. And then they use this money to go out and buy what I like to call dumb stuff. Now, nothing wrong with buying dumb stuff. You just gotta understand that this dumb stuff is losing you money. That G Wagon is not putting money in your pocket. That Rolex is not putting money in your pocket. Now, if you were in the car or the watch business, then maybe these can be investments for you, but I'm talking about for the average person right now. For the regular person, these things are not investments. And so now, when a wealthy person is going out and they're buying these expensive things, they're not working hard to make money to buy the dumb stuff. They're working hard to buy the assets which make the money which pay for the dumb stuff. What everybody else does, the majority of what I like to call fake rich people, fake rich Americans and America is the land of fake rich because we love debt, we love credit. It's great for the economy, it's great for entrepreneurs, it's horrible for consumers who don't understand money. And America is one of the best places to live. It is the land of opportunity. You have more opportunities here than anywhere else, which is why people around the world would literally risk their lives to come here. But you have to understand the way the economic system works because if you don't understand the mindset of the system, if you don't understand the system, you are going to stay a pawn in the system. And this is again, why that financial education is so important. So what the majority of people are doing is they have this right here. You make money. Maybe it's from your job, maybe it's from your business, it does not matter, but you make money and then you Take the money and you go out and you buy the dumb stuff. You go out and you buy the G Wagon, you go out and you buy the Rolex, but you have no assets. So you're working to make money and you're taking that money and you go out and buy the dumb stuff and you have nothing else. You see this on YouTube all the time. YouTubers, let's say you make a million dollars a year from YouTube. You take the million dollars, you go out and you buy a big home to live in, you go out and you buy yourself a Lamborghini, buy a nice car, you buy a nice watch so you can show it off. But now you're working just to buy the nice stuff. But what wealthy people would do is now you make the money, you take this money, you go out and you buy assets, real estate, you go out and you buy stocks, you go and buy other things. And the reason why this is hard is because it slows the process down. Everybody wants to have the nice stuff now. Everybody wants to look rich now. But in order to actually be rich, in order to actually be wealthy, it takes more time and effort because that means now you gotta take this money you're generating and go out and buy something else. 
something that's going to start making you money. And this is a slower money. This money that you can generate from a job or your business, that's more fast money. This is your active money. You can work to grow this. But that's where now you got to take that pause, go out and buy these assets, which means you continue to look broke because you're not spending your money on the dumb stuff yet. Then your assets start paying you. Maybe your assets go up in value. Maybe you start generating cash flow. Just depends on how you want to get paid. I personally like investing for cash flow. That's just what I like. And then you start making more money. And then you can go out and buy whatever dumb stuff you want. Because this dumb stuff isn't from your hard-earned money. This is the hard-earned money that you have. The money you're getting from your job or your business. You got to take this hard-earned money and buy your assets. That way you get this easy-earned money. And this easy-earned money can buy you this dumb stuff. But for the majority of America, it doesn't matter if you make it $25,000 or $2.5 million a year. It's the exact same thing. There's a reason why so many doctors making two, three, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars $600,000 a year are broke. And I know this because I've had a lot of doctors come up to me for financial education saying the exact same thing. Just breathe. my wife and I bring home $545,000 a year. We have a nice home. We have two supercars. We have these nice vacations, but we have no investments. We have $4,000 in our savings accounts and nothing to show for it. We have to live paycheck to paycheck. Every time we get paid, it goes out to all these payments. It goes out to our mortgage. It goes out to our car payments. It goes out to our insurance. It goes out to our travel. It goes out to our food. It goes out to our eating out. And then we have nothing left every single month. So this is where now you have to break the cycle. And the way you break that is you got to stop spending money on the dumb stuff. And then you got to start taking the money and putting it to work. That way you can build your wealth first. It is not your patriotic duty to live broke. That way everybody else can be rich. America is a land of opportunity, but it's only the land of opportunity for the people that understand the way the economic system works and the people that understand how financial education works because, well, the way the system works, it benefits those who understand money. We've heard about inflation. Is inflation good or bad? Well, it depends who you ask. Inflation benefits those who are financially educated. Inflation helps the asset owners. If you're a real estate investor, if you've been investing in stocks and you saw this inflation, your assets soared in value. If you're just a spender, if you're just a consumer like the majority of Americans, inflation hurts you because that means when you go to the grocery store, you got to spend more money and your income's not rising fast enough to keep up with the higher expenses. When you go on a vacation, you got to spend more money. And this is where, again, that financial education is so important. Most of us are never taught this. And that's why it is up to you now to go out of your way to start building and learning on the financial education that we can break out of the cycle of just making money, spending money, wondering where all of your money went. But it starts with a basic level of financial education. Again, if you want some extra resources, you can check out the ebook that we have at Briefs Media. It's completely free. Got that link for you down in the description. You can read books, watch other YouTube videos, listen to podcasts, take classes, take courses, whatever you got to do. You just got to get started and start building that financial education and start putting your money to work for you instead of just making other people rich. If you want to be an overpaid employee, there are three things that you have to understand. Number one is you have to understand the company's financials. Number two, you have to know how to make yourself irreplaceable as an employee. And then number three is you got to know how to get your piece of the pie, meaning how do you get that overpaid salary now? Now, I have hired and fired multiple people at 